Welcome to worship on this Wednesday evening. This is our final midweek Lenten service. We're so thankful that you can join us tonight as we do hold an evening prayer. Uh, tonight during this prayer service, again, we ask you to lift up those in prayer uh, who are on your hearts and minds. Tonight, we also ask for you to continue to pray for Emily and for Judy and her son, Jeff. And we also ask you to continue to pray for Chris and Courtney. Uh, some good news that they are home here in Minnesota. Again, just waiting to join their family again. But we thank you for your prayers and support of them in their shortened uh, time spent in young adults in global mission. Another announcement before we begin tonight is there will still be a blood drive. So the American Red Cross will be here on April 7th, and it'll be from 1 to 5.45 p.m. Uh, this is a vital piece of how we continue to care for people in our medical system. So if you are healthy and able, we invite you to come again April 7th for that blood drive. And last but not least, I want to just extend another thank you to this congregation. We've just been blown away by how you support one another, pray for each other, and keep connected even though we're distant. I encourage you to keep doing that as we follow through on this stay-at-home order. Please keep praying for one another, calling each other, and reach out to us if you have any need or an encouraging word that you need to hear. We'll check our voicemails regularly, and pastors will be accessible by email and phone call. So please reach out, and we thank you for being the body of Christ during this time. I invite you to take a moment to prepare your hearts and your minds for worship. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. light of heavenly glory, loving glow of God's own face, you who sing creation's story, shine on every land and race. Now as evening falls around us, we shall raise our songs to you, God of God, thanks and praise. Blessed are you, creator of the universe. 
from old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright, for your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you are the light and life of all creation. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Tonight, our scripture will be Psalm 130, and as we did last week, I encourage you to find a Bible in your home, whether it's a hard copy or on your phone or online, and look up Psalm 130. Any translation, again, will do. I will read this psalm three different times. I'm going to read it from a couple of different translations, and each time, again, as we did last week, I encourage you to, in prayer, listen and see what God brings to light in this psalm. So each time, see which verse or part of Psalm 130 jumps off the page. The first reading is going to be from the New International Version, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning, 
more than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Now Psalm 130 from the message. Help, God, the bottom has fallen out of my life. Master, hear my cry for help. Listen hard, open your ears, listen to my cries for mercy. If you, God, kept records on wrongdoings, who would stand a chance? As it turns out, forgiveness is your habit, and that's why you're worshipped. I pray to God my life a prayer and wait for what he'll say and do. My life's on the line before God, my Lord, waiting and watching till morning. Waiting and watching till morning. O Israel, wait and watch for God. With God's arrival comes love. With God's arrival comes generous redemption. No doubt about it, he'll redeem Israel. Buy back Israel from captivity to sin. The third and final Psalm 130 reading comes from the New Revised Standard Version. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your word, for the many translations that bring it to life. We thank you for speaking into our lives here in this sanctuary and in each of the homes of those who are worshiping tonight. May you bless us and calm our hearts and our minds. May you be with us tonight and every night. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So I invite you to think for a second about your birth order. Maybe you were an only child. Maybe with your siblings, you're the oldest, possibly the middle, or as I think, the best place to be, the youngest child. I myself am the youngest of three, and one of the luxuries was not hand-me-downs, but one of the true luxuries of being the third child was learning from the experiences of my siblings. Growing up, I got to watch my sister, who's the oldest, and my brother, who's the middle, experience life, its joys, and its mistakes and challenges. I won't rat them out and say who had more challenges or joys, but I certainly watched them and I learned. I learned what I wanted to repeat and do, and I certainly learned what I wanted to avoid and not repeat. That's how Psalm 130 is working. 
Psalm 130 is a testament of faith, and it's for every believer that comes after this author to follow, to look at, and see their experience with God, the creator of the universe. This author begins with a cry for help. It's clear that they're in some sort of crisis, that they are just weighed down with sin and mistakes. They begin by crying from the depths. They want God to hear them and to be with them. After their cry for help, they are in a period of waiting. Anticipation to see where God will show up and what God will do in the midst of their crisis and brokenness. They say more than those who watch for the morning as dawn brings hope and light and life, yet they're waiting in darkness for God to show up. After their cry out of the depths and their period of waiting, the author of Psalm 130 finds themselves in confidence and trust. They're able to proclaim that their hope is in God. Their hope is in God because God brings forgiveness and redemption, and God does show up just like every morning the sun does rise again. And in verse 7, the author turns to Israel or to you and me, like I said, all believers who come after this psalm was written, they turn to us, the body of Christ, and they encourage us. They tell us to find our hope in God just as they have. They reassure us that God is a God that forgives. God is a God that loves, and God is a redemptive God. So I ask you tonight, as you are gathered in worship, where are you? Are you in a moment of crying out in the depths? Are you waiting in anticipation for the sun to rise again? Are you confident in trusting and hoping in God? Are you encouraging others to find hope in God? I know these times are difficult, and as we all are on a stay-at-home order, we might find ourselves hour by hour in a different place. But as you sit and take a deep breath, where are you in this moment? The promise for you is no matter where you are, you are in God's care. Whether you feel like crying out or you're just waiting anxiously for things to return to normal, or if you're feeling good and confident and encouraging others, you right now in this moment are in God's care. And God who has you in care forgives you. That same God who has you in this moment loves you and can redeem you from all things. So let's learn from Psalm 130 that no matter where we find ourselves, we will always be in God's care. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God. I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Well, we cannot gather physically. We gather together in spirit and in prayer. Well, we cannot accept the elements. We can still remember the promise in the words of institution. We are fasting from communion until we can gather together again as a people of God. But as the people of God, we remember the promise Jesus gave us. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink. Saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in remembrance, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God, creator, bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light for our lives. May the spirit of love be our guide and path for all of our days. Amen. Let us go in peace, remembering always that Christ is with us. Thanks be to God.